The best mirrorless camera can be different things to different people. Obviously, it means one thing if I want to take holiday snaps and another if I want to film a documentary. So, the best tool for the job really depends on the job, which is why this guide is divided into different use cases. I own and use a lot of different cameras, but for my money, the best mirrorless camera overall is probably the Canon EOS R7, an APS-C powerhouse with all the punch of a full-frame camera, combined with all the advantages of a cropped sensor. Again, it has particular pros and cons depending on what you use it for, but it's the most adaptable camera on this list in the overlapping Venn diagram of price, performance, and portability. We have listed the best mirrorless camera for 2024, and their key features you need to consider this to help you choose the best one for you. For more information on the product, as always, I've included a link in the description box down below, which are updated with the best prices on each product. Like the video, comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Be sure to stay tuned till the end. So, you don't miss anything now, let's get started. Number five. Sony A7IV. The Sony A7IV is a truly modern hybrid camera. It's overkill for beginners. And more expensive than its stills focused competition, but it's also a versatile workhorse for anyone who wants to shoot a mixture of photos and video. In our tests, we found the A7IV to have class leading autofocus skills, although Sony has since launched the pricier. A 7RV with its new eye autofocus chip and improved subject detection. Its buffer depth proved. Seemingly endless as well, meaning the camera can almost indefinitely maintain its maximum burst speeds. When using a key effects press card, it swallowed 9 FPS for over a minute, or 6-7 FPS when continuously shooting raw. The A7IV's new 33 MP full-frame sensor doesn't dramatically improve image quality. Over the A7 III, the higher resolution also means fairly prevalent noise above ISO 6400, and there's a heavy crop on 4K footage. A price bump means it no longer occupies the same entry-level price bracket, as its popular predecessor either, but upgrades, like 10-bit video and a Bion's Exa processor make it a much more powerful option. As a complete package, the Sony. A7IV is a solid all-rounder which could be the only mirrorless camera you'll ever need. Number four, Canon EOS R10. There are cheaper mirrorless camera for beginners, but none that can match the versatility of the Canon EOS R10. From our tests, two features set, the Canon EOS R10, apart for learners, its 15 FPEs, burst shooting rate, and powerful subject tracking autofocus, which operates across 651 AF points. These two features, combined to make the R10. A fantastic performer in a range of scenarios, particularly when subjects are fast moving. We found it particularly good at tracking the eyes of subjects. It's not a perfect camera for beginners. We found the EVF, a little small, and also noted the lack of image stabilization, a feature which is offered on rivals like the Olympus OMDEM 10 Mark V below. Then again, we also found that the R10's low weight and deep grip make it a forgiving camera for novices to use. We also noted positively in our review the helpful presence of an AF joystick. The only major drawback is the lack of native lenses, currently available for Canon's RF mount. In all other respects, the R10 is a versatile option for photographers getting started. Number 3. Sony A7RV At 61MP, the Sony A7RV has the same class-leading resolution as the A7RIV before it. But thanks to a new sensor and powerful Bion's Exner processing engine, our review found that the A7RV is a better camera overall. Paired with high quality optics and up to eight stops of image stabilization, we found it capable of capturing outstanding detail. We found image quality to be excellent. When shooting detailed subjects, making the A7RV a fantastic choice for landscape or studio pros in our tests, its AI powered real time recognition AF wasn't foolproof, but it could reliably lock onto a range of subjects, 
working particularly well with people, even in wider scenes. Its articulating touchscreen provides useful flexibility when it comes to framing, while the EVF is as sharp here as on the A7S III. If you want a high-spec full-frame powerhouse and don't mind paying for it, the A7RV is a serious step up from its predecessor. But if you can't afford the best glass, want to shoot slow-mo, 4K video or simply don't need such high resolution, you might find better value in the A7IV. Number 2. Panasonic Lumix S5 II The Panasonic Lumix S5 II is a worthy successor to one of our favourite video cameras, the S5. Like the S5, the S5 tie is ticketed as a hybrid, but video is where it excels. In our tests, we found it 6K slash 30p footage, rich and detailed with wide dynamic range. Its video chops are bolstered by 10-bit recording. Across almost all resolutions, plus the ability to record uncropped footage. Using the sensor's full 3, 2 aspect ratio, useful for cropping content. We also found it sturdy, yet comfortable to handle. During testing, happily, its compact design doesn't compromise the physical controls. The S5 II is Panasonic's first mirrorless camera with phase detection, AF for video. Combined with effective image stabilization, we found it produces sharp, stable video. Even when shooting handheld, although the 1.5x crop on 4K 60p video is a shame. The Panasonic Lumix GH6 is a more travel-friendly video powerhouse. With a micro four-thirds sensor, while serious videographers will be drawn by the Lumix S5X. Nevertheless, the S5 II is a fantastic full-frame hybrid for high-quality video. Number 1. Canon EOS R7 The Canon EOS R7 is like one of the camera giant's full-frame EOS R cameras, only with a smaller APS-C sensor. For the price, it's impressively powerful, particularly if you're a fan of shooting wildlife or sports scenes. That's because it boasts 15 FPA's burst speeds, or 30 FPA's if you switch to the electronic shutter. Our tests found that the EOS R7 can indeed hit these speeds, though you don't get the deep buffers found on full-frame siblings like the EOS R6, so it can't sustain those speeds for quite as long. Beyond rattling off frames of speeding animals, the EOS R7 offers comfortable handling, Canon's latest subject tracking autofocus system, and and dual UHS-2 card slots, making it a camera that will also tempt pro EOS R series fans as a second body. The only downside? Canon has so far only made two native lenses for the EOS R7's APS-C sensor. More should be en route though, and you can always mount existing RF lenses or adapt older EF lenses from Canon's DSLRs while you wait.